first Sabbath of 2023, you know, um, and it's a pleasure to be here at church today, you know, we have to give God thanks, you know, uh, my wife and I, we're at um, the, the um, Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Margate, you know, um, we have to give God thanks, you know, take us to 2022, and now all the way to one week in 2023, you know, we all have to give God thanks and make sure we do that throughout the year and throughout the rest of our life. You know, I want to say thanks to each and every one, you know, each and every one that supports us and supports our family, you know, as we go along through the year, you know. Um, now I'm going to take you into the church and see our worship service. We just been through a part of the service already. Sabbath school already so you know um, I'm going to give you the harder part of the service right now as we go along um, the rest of the day. Thank you for viewing MG video profile you know make sure you log in you know each and every week each and every day and support. Make sure you subscribe like share and make a comment you know tell me how you like it you know my wife already inside We'll, at, 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 at the end of the service, I'll, you know, make a little closing with her and so on. But right now, I'm going to take you into church to see the praise and worship and the rest of the service. Thank you for viewing right now. The first Sabbath of 2023, we are here.
Grace and mercy. Amen. We are praying God's blessings on your union that you will experience the love of God among you. God bless you. I'm going to add a few more verses to what was read earlier for our sermon today. I'm going to begin in verse chapter 14 and read through verse 18 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And here, here's the word of God for us today. Here it is. Paul is writing to Corinthian brothers and sisters, and he says in verse 14, For the love of Christ urges us or constrains us, because we are convinced that one, died, one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. We see no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything new has come. All this is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. This is the word of God for the people of God. And I've entitled the message today, I've been made new. Tell your neighbor, I've been made new. Pray with the preacher, loving God. Thank you so much for this blessed privilege. And so now I stand with the assurance that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because you have anointed me to preach. And so that I preach this word, do so through me, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So today is for Consecration Sabbath, the first Sabbath of the year 2023. And something very special happened this morning with the leaders of your church. As pastor and elders, we took some time to have an upper room experience. And, and literally we had an upper room experience because we were upstairs. Amen. The church will come together as one for 2023 to do mighty mission for God. Yeah. Take on some of that reverb for me. Thank you. And so today is consecration Sabbath. And so at the end of the sermon, I'll be making an appeal. Yes. I'll be making an appeal for if you haven't given your life to Christ yet, to do so now. And if you have given your life to Christ, to re-consecrate yourself to Christ. And so at the end of the sermon, that appeal, the elders will join me here, and we will be anointing those who desire to be so for 2023 and onwards. We will invite you up, you'll come, the elder will anoint you with holy oil, and send you forth to live in the power of the Spirit. Let the church say amen. 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 Others were waiting for 12 o'clock at midnight. But the reality is everyone was, everyone was anticipating the coming of the new year, whether at sunset or at midnight. Everyone was ex expecting, had this anticipation, expecting the new year to come. Can't wait for it to come, to bring it in with celebration and jubilation. It means that the year which was filled with loss, with pain, with failure, with grief, with hurt, and with frustration is behind us. Yes. And others were hoping and wishing and praying and anticipating the new year because we wanted something new. We wanted a year filled with joy and, and happiness and success and progress and development. A fresh start, new beginning. Recreation, regeneration, regeneration, renewal. We were looking forward to the new year because we wanted something new. Amen. How many of us 
remain the same person we were seven days ago. The new year doesn't bring some magical or mystical or spiritual change or transformation in the people of God. The, the new year is simply a change on the clock and on the calendar. It signifies newness, but it does not bring forth that newness automatically. And so Paul, Paul informs us and tells us how we can re-experience uh, this new beginning, this new transformation, this this rebirth, this regeneration, this recreation, this renewal. Paul said, if anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. Christ died and there was a shift in the universe or a shift on the calendar. What we need is to experience a change brought forth by the blood and the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. The preacher is getting somewhere. Amen. This is Hallelujah. The new, I'm a new creation. Yes. I'm a brand new man. Yes. I've been born again. Washed by the blood. Sanctified by the spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I've been Hallelujah. made new. Is there somebody yes. in Margate who will lift their hand and testify that I've been made new. And if you haven't been yes. made new yes. yet, Jesus says uh, the old has passed uh, and the new has come. And so today, Jesus can make you new. Amen. He can make you new. But pastor, what does it mean to be a new creation? That's, what does it mean to be a new creation? What are the implications of, of being a new creation? Well, Paul, Paul gives us three things I want to lay before us today. To be a new creation means three things. A new creation means a new person. Yes, yes. Here's what I mean. Paul says in verses 14 and 15, here's what he says. For the love of Christ constrains us. It urges us. It controls us because we are convinced. We know nobody can fool us. We know that one has died, and that one is Jesus, and he has died, therefore the world has died. This is all the time. And, and it, it can't be so thin skin that everything someone says, hey, listen, if someone controls you, if someone's words control you, that person controls you. Amen. If everything you say, move me in a to and fro, who am I? Who am I without yours, with your perspective of me? I don't care about your perspective because Christ died for me. Amen. And no matter what you say about me, I'm going to stay in this church. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Thin skin, talk too much. Amen. Talk too much, thin skin. Paul says in Christ, we are new people Amen. with new perspectives. Amen. Glory. Tell me how practical this would be. Instead of going and, 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 and talking bad about someone or bringing on their problems, what about going and praying for the person? What about coming and saying, brother and sister, I hurt you. I'm sorry. I knew, I know I hurt you. I was wrong. Can you forgive me? Can we move on beyond this? Amen. Can we say to someone, listen, I know what you said hurt me and I know you didn't mean it that way, but I took it too far. So I don't think Paul says. The third thing about being a new creation. So, two things. A new creation means we are a new person. I am a new person. Amen. And the Amen. second thing is, I am a new person with a new perspective. And listen what Paul says in verse 18. Paul says, Oh, this is church ought to be a new creation. And, and let me say this. By, by implication of verse 18, you can't have a new creation you can't have a new person without having a new community of faith. Amen. Yes. Here's what yes. that means. If I am transformed yes. and you are transformed, then the church must be transformed. Yes. A new person yes. with a new perspective, with a new purpose. But well, pastor, how do I, if I've not yet experienced this new creation, if I want to experience it again and again, how do I experience it?
to those of us who are church. Continue singing softly. I'm appealing to those in the congregation. I don't know what 2022 was like for you, but you have many hopes for 2023. My hope for you is that you experience this radical newness that comes from being Christ, a new person with a new perspective and a new purpose. I pray that God will bring a transformation in your life, in your family, in your homes, on your jobs, in this church. I pray that all of us will never be the same again. Transform me. God, make me new. God, do something that changes my life to so will never be the same again. Is there anyone in the congregation not yet giving your life to Christ? <coughs> the, the QR code online, send your information, we contact you. We'll get in touch, touch, in touch with you. Anyone in the house who wants to say, God, make me new. Boy, it's not a scene that we invite the elders of the church to join me here. Invite the elders of the church to join me here on the platform. Because today is consecration Sabbath. And as God's leaders, we are going to be consecrating the people of God today. So that your lives in from here on end will never be the same again. Continue. So if you want to be anointed today, I invite you, I'll invite you at that time to come forward. We're going to have prayer on the oil, and the elders will be anointing those who will come forward. Anointing for health, anointing for healing, anointing for your well-being, for a healthy state of mind, a healthy state of being. Anointing for whatever is happening in your life.
I'm going to invite the praise team just to sing that hymn right now. I'm going to invite all my elders to come forward and to receive a cup in which you receive the oil to anoint those who come forward.
God bless you. Come back again, little shark. What's your name? We're looking forward to see you again, okay? Okay, God. Okay, my pastor. God bless. God bless. God bless. Okay. Oh. So my nose go to We're giving cards. Hello, nice hello, 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 Thanks for coming. Too. I yeah, hope I see you again. Yeah, well, you yes, will, you will. Yes, come again. Yes. Yeah, man. Dr. Flo.